What's going on, Giants fans? You're watching New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. And in today's show, we have some roster moves to get to. The Giants, they've made three of them. They've signed two players, and they've also cut a player. Because that's what happens when you're shuffling the bottom of the 90-man roster that you have going on at training camp. And then at the end of the show, I have a career year candidate. A guy that I think is going to play his best football this season, and it's, I have a lot of reasons. We'll break it all down at the end of the show. But first, we have some Giants news to get you guys. A transaction has happened. The Giants signed veteran tackle Will Holden this morning. They did work him out yesterday. They also worked out a couple guys as well. He said the need, uh, Jordan Renan was first on the, on the news. He does a great job on the Giants beat. He said this was a needed depth at position, especially after the Matt Gano news. Holden has played in 27 career games with nine starts. I actually saw, according to Pro Football Reference, he has 10 starts. And the Giants, they also waived the defense alignment, Nico Lelos, just a kid from Akron, who was a favorite of the previous regime, but didn't seem to have a place with the new staff. We'll talk about Lelos later on in the show, but let's start with Will Holden, who was a fifth-round selection by the Arizona Cardinals back in the 2017 NFL Draft. And he's kind of played all over. He's been on multiple teams, but actually only played five snaps for teams like the, or played for five teams where he's actually gotten snaps and with the Cardinals, Colts, Ravens, and Lions. And he's played in 14 games last year for the Detroit Lions and has 10 career starts. This is a depth piece of Giants after Gano had to retire, but or might retire because of a potential career-ending injury. We'll talk about Gano later. The Giants, they just needed another backup offensive lineman, especially at the tackle spot going into camp and throughout preseason. He'll battle to make a, ro a roster spot when we get down to 53 players, but it's going to be really an uphill battle for Mr. Holden. We have some stats to check out on Holden, but first, this is why you subscribe. When news comes out, we get you guys a video as soon as we can daily. Giants coverage, 100% free content, news, rumors, breaking news like when the Giants signed Will Holden and they signed another player and cut another one. We're going to get you guys the video faster than anybody else on YouTube. We're also doing live shows. We're the best audience interaction channel on YouTube and watch parties on game day are coming. I can't wait. We're going to be live for the preseason game next week, so subscribe and turn your notifications on so you are always in the know when a video comes out or we go live on the channel. Let's take a look at the player that Will Holden is. Last year, like we talked about, played 14 games for the, for the Detroit Lions, just 71 snaps. According to PFF, he had an overall grade of 60.8, a pass block grade of 71.5, a very bad run blocking grade of 28, and he only allowed three pressures, just one sack. He's not terrible, he's not great, but he's at the talent level where you get signed in the first week of August. This is a training camp body. Holden will fight for a roster spot. At the end of the day, I don't know if that's going to be enough for him to get on the team. The Giants are starting offensive line, as we know, will be Andrew Thomas and Evan Neal at the bookend tackle spots. But there is positions to fight for, like the backup left tackle spot. Because the two rookies out of North Carolina, the two guards in McKeithen and Azudu, they're having to play offensive tackle because of how thin they were. Holden, he will help them in that department. I think he's just a camp body. He'll be here through preseason, but I do not think he will make this Giants roster. We also have an update on Matt Gano. He had to leave the team. He was on the left team thing, which is something I had never heard of, which pretty much means he had to leave camp for whatever reason it may be, and the reason is out. He likely has a career-ending neck injury. That sucks. Injuries suck. You put your heart, soul, and everything into your career, and you can't do it anymore because your body is failing on you. As an athlete like Matt Gano, that is very, very unfortunate. We'll show him some love in a second, but let's take a look at what the offensive line looks like after Gano is out and Will Holden is in. The offensive line, the starting five, it doesn't change. It's still Thomas. In my opinion, it'll be Lemieux and Feliciano at the left guard and center spot. Mark Lewinsky is no doubt going to start at right guard, and same with Evan Neal 
at right tackle. You have Hamilton as a backup left tackle. You have Seymour as a backup right tackle. Matt Pear, in my opinion, will probably start the season on the IR. And then you have Holden, who could compete for a swing tackle spot like we talked about. The rookies Azudu and McKeithen were getting reps at tackle, but now with Seymour, Holden, and Hamilton at camp, hopefully they can get back to playing their initial and primary position at the interior offensive line. I do want to show Matt Gano some love, though, because like we talked about, when you're an athlete, you got to put blood, sweat, and tears into this, especially to make it in the NFL, and he's done that. And he got another chance with the Giants this offseason, and for now, for him to have to retire because of a potential career-ending neck injury, that stinks. My thoughts and prayers are with him. So let's type 73 in the comment section. Get well. Get ready as soon or get back as soon as you can if you ever want to play football again. But just so you have a regular life going forward. Good health and the best of wishes to Matt Gano. Type 73 to show my guy some love. We have more news to get to. Field Yates, he tweeted this out yesterday. The Giants have claimed DB Nate Meters off of waivers from the Cleveland Browns. And this was, I don't want to say Meters was the expected guy. But the Giants needed safety help, and especially depth, after the Dane Belton injury. He broke his collarbone, or clavicle, whatever you want to call it. And he's going to be out for a while. And the Giants, they were already thin at that spot, but they've made two signings to beef up that secondary. And this is what the, the safety room looks like at this point. They signed Wilson first, then they, or Andrew Adams first. Then they signed Wilson, and now they have signed meters to this uh, def defensive back depth chart the safety room coming into camp was kind of a question mark we knew McKenney and Love would be the two guys on the field at the most time we started to see Dane Belton alongside McKenney and Love on the field at the same time and I thought that was going to be the base defense with three safeties kind of a 4-2-5 look but with Belton probably going to miss the first four games of the season expect more just two safety sets with McKenney and Love but this is what it looks like. You got backups with Wilson at the free safety spot. Adams can also play free safety, but I have him as a strong safety with Meters and Yusuf Corker, the undrafted free agent out of Kentucky, right there also fighting for a roster spot. We broke down the first half of this tweet from Jordan Renan at the top of the show, but let's talk about the back half now. Nico Lelos, who was a favorite of the previous regime but did not seem to have a place with the new staff, has been waived by the New York Giants, and let's never forget the Lelos interception versus the Cincinnati Bengals. The tip pass, he fell under it. He was kind of a special teams guy, did a little bit of everything, wasn't really great at anything, but he was versatile, and that's what Joe Judge really was looking for in players. He fit that scheme, and that type of player was wanted by Joe Judge, but I'm not sure just a special teams guy is going to make the roster under Brian Dable, but let's never forget the kid from Akron, the kid from St. Vincent, St. Mary's, Nico Lelos, and the interception he had against the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm going to get, I'm not, I'm kind of upset. I don't get to use that bit anymore. But hey, we are growing Giants now like crazy, and we are growing to platforms that you guys are using, and we are now posting our content over on Rumble, a very similar uh, content creator app like YouTube. But it's a little bit more edgy and has a little bit more New York blood in it, I would say. Free and uncensored content, sports, news, politics, text, and just give us a follow. Show us some love. We're putting videos over there, and we are growing, and I know you guys are a fan of that. So show us some love. Really, my favorite part about Rumble is you can go audio only. You can close out of the app, and the audio will continue to roll, unlike YouTube where you got to pay a premium subscription for that. So if that's something you're interested in, Check, it, check us out over on Rumble, rumble.com slash TV. Now, we teased it off the top of the show, and you probably saw it on the thumbnail, and maybe you've already guessed who the silhouette was. Maybe the hair gave it away. But I'm going to break down my career year candidate because I believe this guy is going to show all the doubters and all the haters of him out there that they're wrong, and he is going to have the best year of his career with Big Blue. But before I reveal officially who it is, I want to hear from you. Let me know. Who is your career year candidate? Who's the guy that you think is going to have the best season of their NFL career this year? Play above expectations or just have a breakout year. Who's the guy you're thinking is going to play like a beast this year for Big Blue on Sundays? Let me know. For me, 
It's Leonard Williams. I really do believe this is the year that Leonard Williams is going to put all the haters, the naysayers, the weirdos out there, as I like to call them, to bed. Because Leonard Williams is an absolute beast. And he's the guy, in my opinion, that gets slept on amongst Giants fans. He's ready to have a career year. He has been unblockable at training camp. We'll show you some pictures in a second. But I also think there's multiple reasons to this why I have this opinion. And we'll break it down. But the first one is financial reasons. The Giants could save $18 million with an $8.3 million dead cap hit if the Giants cut Leonard Williams after this season. He's one of the highest paid interior defensive linemen in the NFL, and he doesn't want to miss out on any of that cheddar. He wants to secure that bag. He hears the hate. He's a smart guy. You know he's heard from his agent that he has to play well this year if he wants to get that guaranteed money next year, and I believe he will. He has been unblockable at training camp. I mean, just look at this picture. The interior offensive line has stood no chance blocking Leonard Williams. They've ripped his jersey off of his chest. They're holding. They're doing whatever they can, and it has not mattered. Jamil Douglas, he got demoted from backup center to third string center because of what Leonard Williams did to, to, did to him. Mark Glowinski has also not fared well against a guy like Leonard Williams. John Feliciano did a little bit better, but he also did not look good against Leonard Williams. He's a beast, and this is the year where he's going to show everybody what type of football player he is. Last year, kind of an underwhelming season, I would say. 82 tackles, which is solid for an interior defensive lineman, but just six and a half sacks and five tackles for loss and just 14 QB hits. I'm looking for that 2020 season to get back. That's the type of player I want to see again. 11 and a half sacks, 16 tackles for loss, and 30 QB hits. He's a disruptor. He is a guy that creates havoc, and I believe Leonard Williams is going to get back to that 2020 player this year. And another reason is because Martindale's system will benefit Leonard Williams greatly. All the disguised blitzes and the unique fronts and schemes and the free rushers that Martindale is able to generate in his exotic blitzing scheme is going to benefit him. Martindale is someone that is a, de is a defensive lineman's dream coordinator to play with. He's going to move Leonard Williams all over the ball. He'll play a little bit of nose. He'll play a little bit of three-tech, five-tech, and maybe even a little bit of wide nine. And another reason I think Leonard Williams is going to have a great year, this defensive line is loaded, and no longer can an offensive line coach or an offensive coordinator base their blocking scheme and plan for the week solely around Leonard Williams. Because you got to deal with Aziz Ojolari now, who had an eight-sack season as a rookie, and you just drafted Kayvon Thibodeau in the top ten in the NFL draft. He's a freaking stud, and I believe Dexter Lawrence is also going to have a great season. The Giants' defensive line is the most talented group or position group, I would say, on this team. With Thibodeau, Williams, Lawrence, Ojolari, Quincy Roche, Jihad Ward, Ellerson Smith, O'Shea Zimenez might make this roster, but the big four in Thibodeau, Williams, Lawrence, and Ojolari. You can't focus on Leonard Williams solely anymore, and I think he's going to benefit from that, just being another guy on this team, and he's going to have a hell of a season. If you agree with me, or you disagree with me, or if you just want Leonard Williams to be that player that we thought we were getting from the New York Jets, to get back to that 2020 season where he had almost 12 sacks and double-digit tackles for loss, in 30 QB hits, I want you to type 99 in the comment section right now. Let's show them some love. If you want to see the best of Leonard Williams, do it. Type 99 in the comments right now. I want to say thank you to everybody that has made New York Giants now a part of their day today. It's Friday afternoon. You could be doing a lot of different things, but if you made it this far in the video, you're a real one. So do so, and let me know that you made it this far. Type real one in the comment section so I can, you know, decipher the fakers from the real ones. And we'll see you later on, a ne on the next New York Giants Now.